Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including disappearing affordable EVs, Tesla expanding their main factory, new Model S incentives and more, so let's get into it. First up today, it's looking like Tesla might be expanding their Fremont factory. They've been working on expanding their operations everywhere, breaking ground on new factories in Mexico and China, but they still need more space in Fremont. That was Tesla's first factory, and now they seem to have outgrown it, forcing them to make some changes. There's not a whole lot of room for expansion there though. Pretty much their only options are to buy adjacent buildings, build up, or make their current space more efficient. When it comes to efficiency, it does sound like there's a lot of room for improvement though. After a tour of the facility, analyst Adam Jonas said, quote, the plant was never designed to produce 450,000 units, which was immediately apparent at the tour. Tesla does not shy away from the fact the plant is inefficiently designed with four assembly buildings, one of which is a tent that cars are assembled in. Jonas added that there wasn't enough space for trucks to drop off supplies, quote, in locations that make sense inside the plant. Now Tesla has submitted several filings that appear to be for new tooling installments, according to Tesla Rati. The first one will be on the bottom floor where vehicle assembly is. The second is for the second floor and it looks like Tesla might be making room for other projects where they have their battery manufacturing projects currently. This filing is listed as equipment space moves, so with battery manufacturing expanding, it makes sense that Tesla is just trying to clear out more space for that. These two filings represent two different projects that they're working on, but at the same time, the whole factory is reportedly getting shifted slowly to a more efficient layout. For now, that entails moving their industrial vehicles and chargers to another location and making more room on the second floor. This is where Tesla is manufacturing battery packs for the Cybertruck, at least so far, and it's unclear if they're making them anywhere else. It would make sense that they'll need to ramp this project since the Cybertruck is supposedly being released this summer, which is fast approaching. Those packs will then be shipped to Giga Texas where the Cybertruck is being built. Next up today, Tesla may be regretting their choice of giving early owners free supercharging for life. For the first couple of years after Tesla started selling the Model S and X, they offered supercharging for the lifetime of the vehicle. The network was much smaller then, but it was a great deal if you lived near one, because you'd basically never have to pay to charge your car, which can definitely add up to save you a lot of money. Without this offer, the best way to charge your EV is at home, because you can charge during off-peak hours, and that's much cheaper than going to a supercharger. It's also best for the battery long term. For people that didn't have that option though, like many living in apartments or condos, this deal was doubly convenient. Then in 2018, Tesla stopped offering this perk because they claimed it was unsustainable, but vehicles that already had it were allowed to keep it, of course. Today, there are still tons of Teslas with unlimited free supercharging around the world, and Tesla is now trying to wane that number. Their first attempt was back in February when they offered owners a $5,000 discount to trade in their Model S or X with unlimited free supercharging for a new one. Then recently, they accompanied a price increase with a three-year unlimited supercharging deal. Last week, the configurator was updated to say, receive three years of unlimited free supercharging with purchase of a new Model S or Model X. Now that pop-up is still there, but they've also launched what they call an ownership loyalty benefit. If you buy a new Model S or X by the end of the quarter, Tesla is offering six years of unlimited supercharging. They aren't trying to hide that their goal is to get rid of unlimited lifetime supercharging here though. Tesla says, quote, current Tesla Model S or Model X owners with active unlimited free supercharging are eligible for six years of unlimited supercharging. To qualify, owners must trade in or remove unlimited supercharging from their vehicle and take delivery of a new Model S or Model X by June 30th, 2023. They add as a disclaimer that the program is subject to end or change without notice. Tesla is really trying to sell these cars and these are clearly what people call demand triggers that they're pulling here. I'm not sure why many owners would give up that benefit if they're locked in for life on an older car and have been driving free this entire time. That said, for some owners who really want a new one, it gives them six years and a new car before they have to start paying to charge. Essentially, owners would be getting a much better vehicle since there have been many changes to this car since 2018, and they would still be able to charge it for free at least for six years. All in all, I wouldn't be surprised if not that many people actually take Tesla up on this new ownership loyalty benefit, but it might be worth it for people that value having the latest tech and are willing to give it up after another six years of free charging. Again though, this will mean the most to people that aren't going to just be regularly charging their new Model S or X at home. It really looks like we're seeing Tesla try to find every which way that they can sell more Model S's and X's because most people are trying to get the Model 3 and Y instead. 
Next up today, some big news for affordable EVs. For the longest time, there has been this idea that once a legacy automaker makes an EV, it'll be cheaper and better than a Tesla. Back in 2016, GM delivered on this to a degree, introducing the Chevy Bolt. At the time, headlines were positive that this car would crush Tesla. Quote, we just drove the all-electric Chevy Bolt, and Tesla is officially in trouble. This car initially launched with a 238-mile EPA-estimated range and starting MSRP of $37,495, especially at the time, that price was very impressive. Today, the Bolt sells starting at $26,500 and offers a 259 mile top range. Chevy also sells the EUV version, which is a bit larger, but very much the same car. Those price drops were leading to impressive demand for this car. Back in October, in fact, we actually heard that Chevy was going to boost production on this car to meet growing sales. For a time, it seemed like the EV that GM was actually able to keep growing and scaling prior to the introductions of EVs based on their new platform. It's not the best EV out there and particularly lacks in charging speed, but offered a lot for a small cost. However, many, including myself, were speculating for some time that Chevy wouldn't keep this car going for long. Back in 2016, we heard that Chevy was losing losing $9,000 on each bolt they sold. With recent price drops, that likely got even worse, so it was only a matter of time before they ditched this old platform vehicle for their newer ones. On top of that, the Bolt has had its fair share of terrible press, and for good reason. It's one of the only electric cars to truly have its battery recalled at scale, with GM spending billions to replace faulty batteries in most years of that car. Still though, this car was exciting because it was an affordable EV with a decent range. It was the EV that we need and qualified for incentives for a period of time, making it incredibly cheap. Now we're learning though that in this regard, Tesla has been right all along. It doesn't really matter if this car exists unless it can be truly scaled and scaled profitably. This week, we learned that the Chevy Bolt will officially be discontinued later this year. In the words of a Chevy spokesperson, quote, when the Chevrolet Bolt EV launched, it was a huge technical achievement and the first affordable EV, which set in motion GM's all electric future. As the company continues to grow its EV portfolio with the Ultium platform, Chevrolet confirmed confirmed Bolt EV and EUV production will end late this year. In its place, Chevrolet will be launching several new EVs later this year based on the Ultium platform, including the Silverado EV, Blazer EV, and Equinox EV. The Equinox there is expected to replace the Bolt, and the Bolt was definitely a loved vehicle with orders almost booked out until Chevy ends its production. Its replacement is wider and will charge much faster, have more range and options, be all-wheel drive, and have a more modern interior. It'll also have features like V2L that wouldn't make sense on the Bolt. That said, a lot of people are going to miss the current 20 $25,600 price point before incentives. I think a lot of people have seen this coming, but the timing doesn't really make sense to me. GM was finally scaling this car up and people were buying it, and instead they're ending production for its replacement, a replacement of which they've shipped zero units. It's definitely a better replacement, but it's just not out yet. GM will be starting from scratch on this new platform later this year and has an intense road ahead. It's good to see them going all in on their new platform, but I'm not sure it makes full sense that they go all in on this before they've shipped a single Equinox EV. V. What it is demonstrating though is just how right Tesla has been this whole time. The Bolt was the cheap EV that would beat Tesla. People would ask, where is Tesla's cheap EV? Others can do it, why can't they? Well, clearly others can't do it. GM can't make this car anymore and needs to try to make a better version or on a better, more optimized platform. It does worry me though. GM has already shipped the Lyric and Hummer EV on their Ultium platform and the scaling of those cars has been almost hilariously slow. Now they're going all in on their $30,000 Equinox at the same time that they're launching two other EVs, all of which will likely not be profitable at first. If they see production issues, they won't be making any other EVs. I just think the Bolt should have lasted a bit longer. There was a place for it, and while Chevy works on scaling new cars, they may see a lot of customers just go elsewhere. Even though Tesla has talked for a while now about their future $25,000 EV, it has taken a long time to come to any sort of fruition. We're now seeing why they can't rush it, and that when they finally do it, they'll ensure it's optimized, profitable, and scalable, and a car that can actually stay around for a long time. Next up today, we reported last week that Tesla introduced a new Model Y variant in Canada and Mexico. At the original Model Y unveiling, Tesla announced a standard range, rear wheel drive, long range, dual motor, all wheel drive, and performance model. Now we're seeing Tesla finally reintroduce that rear wheel drive, long range model in certain markets. And we weren't really sure where these Model Ys would be coming from. I figured they could come from Fremont, but in that case, they'd probably introduce this car in the US and it'd be adding a new assembly line to Fremont 
not, so I kind of doubted it. So instead, it seemed like they might be importing it from China, where they already make that car, and it's looking like that is the case. According to a Reuters report, it was leaked in a production memo that China will be exporting cars to North America for the first time with this new model. Back when Tesla broke ground on Giga Shanghai in 2019, Elon Musk said the factory would just be for the local market. He said on Twitter, quote, Shanghai Giga output is just for greater China, not North America. Affordable cars must be made on same continent as customers. Reuters even reports that Tesla might be considering exporting from China in November, and Elon responded to that claim by simply saying false. Over the last couple years, Giga Shanghai has become Tesla's biggest and most cost-efficient factory, and North America continues to be its largest market. So it's no surprise they're changing their mind here. Part of the reason they introduced this model in Canada was to take advantage of new incentives there. Canada's incentive requirements involve a price cap, sort of like in the US, with caps at 60,000 Canadian dollars and 70,000 Canadian dollars. So both the rear-wheel drive model and the long range, which start at 69,900 Canadian dollars, qualify for the $5,000 credit, which converts to about $3,700 USD. Reportedly, someone with knowledge of this model's development said they started production of it earlier this month. So that lines up with Tesla Canada's website saying deliveries should be between May and July. This source added that their target is to produce almost 9,000 of them this quarter. Elon has previously said that this model doesn't meet the Tesla standard of excellence, but they've continued selling this car in other markets and have now introduced it in Canada and Mexico. It would make sense for Tesla to offer this cheaper Model Y in the US as well if it weren't for the new IRS EV tax credit requirements. If they offered this new model here, it wouldn't qualify while higher spec Model Ys do. So a higher spec Model Y would end up being cheaper after incentives if you qualify. Because of that, I don't think we'll end up seeing this cheaper Model Y in the US after all, since it's coming from China, at least for the foreseeable future. Next up today, Tesla has released their 2022 impact report, which details the various ways they're accomplishing their mission to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. It includes a ton of information about their sustainable practices and the overall health of the company. This one was 213 pages, so it's the most in-depth one they've ever released. But Sawyer Merritt summarized it well on Twitter. One of the main focuses of this report was Tesla's vehicle efficiency. A single Tesla vehicle avoids 55 tons of CO2 equivalent over its life. They admit the EV manufacturing currently produces more greenhouse gas than their ICE counterparts, but show that after two years of driving, that difference is more than made up for. This chart shows that over 17 years, the average lifespan of a vehicle in the US, a Tesla will save that 55 tons of CO2 equivalent. In 2022, Tesla customers avoided releasing about 13.4 million metric tons of CO2 equivalent into the atmosphere via Tesla's vehicles, energy storage, and solar panels. That's equal to about 33 billion miles of driving, and Sawyer Merritt points out that that that's a 52% increase from 2021. In 2022, their entire supercharger network, as well as half of home charging in California, was 100% renewable, and they achieved that through a combination of on-site resources and annual renewable matching. They also talk a lot about efficiency. Not only is the Model Y one of the most popular vehicles in the world, it's also the most efficient SUV ever made. Here they compare miles per kilowatt hour to the VW ID4, Ford Mustang Mach-E, Jaguar I-Pace, and Audi e-tron. On top of that, they report that a Tesla battery only degrades by 12% after 200,000 miles. So long after most ICE vehicles get scrapped, a Tesla should be going strong. Regarding manufacturing greenhouse gas, Tesla actually achieved a 30% year-over-year reduction in GHG operational emissions per vehicle in 2022. So manufacturing a Tesla is getting greener each day. Part of how they accomplished that was through AI. Quote, in 2022, AI control was launched at Gigafactory Texas and expanded to 34% of the total heating, ventilation, and air conditioning infrastructure at Gigafactory Nevada. The AI control policy enables HVAC systems within each Gigafactory to work together to process sensor data, model Gigafactory dynamics, and apply control actions that safely minimize the energy required to support production. They also achieved a 15% year-over-year reduction in water use per vehicle during production in 2022 through water-intensive process optimization, rainwater and condensate harvesting and reuse, and reclaimed and recycled water. That includes capturing at least 25% of roof runoff in a central underground storage system in Giga, Texas, which should save an estimated 7.5 million gallons of city water in an average year. On top of that, they've demonstrated that Giga Nevada has the capacity to recycle 100 metric tons per week. That comes from manufacturing scrap as well as batteries that have been returned to recycle or have been scrapped for any reason. They claim none of their batteries get to landfills as they aim to reduce their reliance on primary mined materials. As for those materials, a Tesla team visited industrial and artisanal mine sites and met with local stakeholders and NGOs working on issues 
like health, safety, and child labor remediation in the Democratic Republic of Congo in November. All of that is incredibly important to see, and Tesla is detailing what they're not even required to here. Out of all this information, though, a lot of times people are most concerned about the cost of owning a Tesla. It's the first barrier to entry for someone looking to buy a car, so it's something Tesla is actively working on. With the recent price decreases, a Tesla Model 3 starts at just $39,900. That means that over a five-year period, the total cost of ownership per mile of a Tesla Model 3 rear-wheel drive is similar to a Toyota Corolla. You can see in this chart that even though the Corolla starts at about half the price, the longer you have the Model 3, the more you'll be saving on maintenance and fuel costs. This is a luxury sedan that essentially starts the same as America's favorite starter car. When compared to other luxury EVs, though, the Model 3 is actually the first EV to be priced on par with its ICE equivalents even before taking into account federal and local incentives. The other side to accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy, though, is to sell as many sustainable products as possible, and they do that by growing the company. In 2022, they received a record 3.6 million job applications, which is a 20% increase from 2021, and they now have about 128,000 employees. SpaceX and Tesla were also again ranked number one and number two as the most desirable place to work for engineers by Universum. They added that factoring in overtime and equity, their average national wage for manufacturing jobs in the US is $27.52 per hour. Lastly, Tesla's Megapack deployments have been extremely successful. They've even seen less than a 0.001% failure rate. This number will never be zero, but it will keep getting smaller as Tesla rolls out over-the-air software updates for these relatively new systems. Overall, this report shows a lot of exciting news for Tesla, and it's definitely worth a look if you're interested. I think one of the most impressive things is that Tesla doesn't have to do this report. This isn't something that they're mandated to do. They're doing this all on their own. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. Rivian's Venice Hub in California held an event recently where community members were able to ask questions about the company's future tech features, and Rivian's head of software leaked some updates on towing and other features. The Rivian brand is synonymous with adventure vehicle, and these trucks can already drive through three feet of water, rock crawl a 100% grade, and tow up to 11,000 pounds for the R1T and 7,700 pounds for the R1S. That said, they mentioned their towing capabilities are going to get even better. Rivian quote, will make a big update with everything towing this summer, which will bring improvements to the drivability, but that's not all. He also announced a new integrated dash cam, which they expect to roll out by the end of the month, and that Rivian is in the final steps of integrating and testing this feature. He even said he already has it in his own vehicle. When a community member asked, quote, will the truck bed cam be available while towing, he said that Rivian is still working on it. The company is also working on an over-the-air software update that will include adding creator profiles and a key upgrade involving the camera. Cameras. Some other features he talked about were integrating text messaging on screen, activating cameras via Blinker, navigation improvements to support adventure planning, valet mode, additional entertainment apps, and holiday software events like Halloween mode. That dash cam feature is a big one that Rivian has been missing since they have all the tech to do it in the car, so I'm definitely glad to see that among all of these other features. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see my full video about why I sold my Model S Plaid and my final review of it, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.